Hello everyone, today we're going to be starting a small little series on using React with Rails. Rails will be the API backend, React will be communicating with it through the API as the front end. Now the usual disclaimer applies here, although you may think that you shouldn't use React because the flavor of the month with Rails is Hotwire or whatever we're talking about. Uh, businesses do hire for this and I do get requests for people to cover this uh, because they need to know it for like interviews that they're doing at companies or their new tech stack that they're trying to get familiar with. So although it's not what you would personally use, it is what you know companies out there are using. This will sort of be an evolving thing. I'll be you know adding more with each episode whenever I feel like doing this. Uh, so whatever's here might not be the final product, but this is what we have right now. And this is what we'll sort of be building towards in the first couple videos that should be up on the channel. So what we have here is just a quick little post uh, CRUD app. We have a bunch of posts here. We can create a new post. Uh, the form's not styled, so let me zoom in so you can actually see it. Uh, but we'll cover that later. We can say something like, hello world. This is posted from the, uh, I don't know, client, right? And before I click create here, we can take a look at the terminal. So this is the Rails terminal right here. As soon as I click create, you'll see that we get a post to our, oops, or post to our Rails terminal here. It inserts into the database and then it just renders the slash post again because we're back onto the slash post page. So this looks just like a regular, uh, like Rails apps CRUD interface would look with a scaffold. Now, of course, because you're communicating from one app to another, there's gonna be a lot of overhead here. And generally companies, you know, they consider that trade off and then they say it's still worth it because we have like a bunch of maybe we have like a bunch of React designers that are really good with React, a lot of React devs. Uh, but we don't have anyone that like does the front end aspect for like a Rails tech stack. Uh, and there might be like one or two full stack devs that think that they can do the front end. But at the end of the day, they can't. They can't do it the same way that the front end devs can. So the company makes that trade off and then they say, all right, this is, you know, this is something that we can do. Uh, and then we just have like the React devs working on this and then they have to communicate with it. So it requires a bit more setup because you have to like make the React app and then every one of these like things that updates the page or the pages has to go through some kind of service that does like the API call to the Rails app. And that's fine, you know, it's just one of those things you have to deal with. But we have like, what I've tried to do is create something that looks similar to what you would see with a scaffold so that you can like mentally connect. Okay, this is the edit functionality. This takes me to the edit page, just like Rails would. And then when I change this, this will then take me to the update action in my Rails app. So if I come in here and I enter a little bit and I click update post, you'll see this goes to our post controller update action. I then have like the delete action right here that we can do. So let's, I don't know, let's go back to the post list. And for like this one, two, three, I'll click delete. You can see this goes to the post controller delete action. So this is all running off of like a Rails scaffold here, but the React app is running off the API and it's trying to communicate with this, which means that the React code is structured in a little bit of a strange way compared to how you might see it. But at the end of the day, it's a JavaScript app. They don't have standards. Uh, if they did, they'd be using like a real framework. Um, don't tell the JavaScript devs I made that joke. Uh, but okay, so how do we do this? Well, in this video, we're just gonna focus on setting up the Rails app because as usual, that is the easy part that we can do uh, very quickly. So to do this, I'm gonna go ahead and CD out of my Rails app and I'm gonna do a Rails new video space dash dash API. So this API flag is just gonna generate like our controllers and our models for us. It's gonna set up some API stuff for us, uh, but you're not like gonna have the views inside of it. So if we CD into our video and run a code dot to open this up in VS Code, uh, we can then hopefully see, if I move this over, that we have like a traditional Rails app structure here, but we're gonna be missing some stuff. So like if I open up our app and our views, you'll see that we only have the mailers in here because we're still gonna have to send like emails or whatever. Uh, but we don't have like our application layout and we won't have like when we generate our post scaffold, we won't have our post views in here because that's all done through the API. We'll come down here to our config real quick and we can take a look at our routes.rb. Uh, again, we don't have any routes in here right now. What we'll do with this is we'll set up like a, a versioning thing for our routes to hopefully make that work better. But the first thing I want to do is come into our gem file because we do have to set this up a little bit differently. One of the things is on like line 37, uh, there's usually the rack slash cores gem, which we're going to have to uncomment and then we're gonna have to run our bundle install command. The reason why we do this is because we use cores for cross origin uh, resource sharing. This is, uh, it, it's kind of infamous. This is usually the thing that's gonna give you a problem if you're trying to work with an API. 
So you uncomment the gem and then you're gonna have to come into your config initializers and your cores.rb. And then here you're gonna have to uncomment this block. In here, you can kind of ignore this first bit, but the keys in here are the origins. This is like where, uh, where your request comes from, right? So we could say like, uh, e.g. Uh, your React apps, uh, uh, I don't know, IP address, right? Or URL. So in this case, because we're going to be running a Vite app, uh, I already know what the uh, URL is going to be. I can come over here. It's just going to be this, which you'll just have to trust me for now. But this is going to be coming from like 127.0.0.1 colon 5173.0. So this is one option, but then you might also like, maybe you're not going to do that. Maybe you're serving this to everyone. So you might want to say like your origins are just asterisks. So anyone can access your API. In this case, you got to be careful because if anyone can access it, just about everyone will. And then you'll get a bunch of traffic that'll, you know, blow through any sort of bandwidth you might have. So in this case, we're just going to use like our, our, the API of our dev server. And then maybe when we go to deploy this later, we do like an origins for our, I don't know, like HTTPS colon slash slash super dash cool dash domain.com, right? Something like that. But in this case, uh, we're just gonna keep it with our, our dev servers AP or our dev servers um, IP address. Then in your headers down here, this is something you might wanna watch out for depending on your Rails version. It may or may not include the delete. Uh, of course, if you're gonna be deleting resources, you're gonna wanna use this delete, right? Then we can come over to our uh, Rails apps directory again. And then in here, we can do a Rails G scaffold because we're gonna generate our post scaffold. So we're gonna have posts, we're gonna give each post a uh, title and a body of type text. Now implicitly Rails gives the uh, things without anything a type of string. And we can see in here, it once again generates our tests for us, that's good, our models and our migrations. But you're gonna notice down here, we only have like our uh, routes and our controllers. We don't have anything for our views. So if we come over here, because we use that dash dash API flag, our views still don't have a post views in it, right? We do have our controllers, our post controller, in here, we can change this however we would like to, but this is going to pretty much be a one-to-one -one translation for how we're going to do things in our uh, React app. Then in our models and our post.rb, we don't have anything right now. We can worry about that later. Uh, but the last thing I want to do now is I want to come into our gem file and I want to say in our dev and our test environments, let's just add the faker gem because we're going to be using that. And then we can go ahead and we can come into, well, let's do a bundle first. Sorry, we can do a db and then a seeds.rb. And here we can do a uh, post.destroy all if we do end up seeding. And then we can do a, uh, I don't know, let's say like create 20 posts. So we'll just like GitHub Copilot do this for us. It'll do a post.create with a title from Faker with a lorem sentence of, th you know, three word count titles similar to what we have here. And then a sentence count of three, which means we're gonna have three sentences in the body, for example. We can then do a Rails DB colon migrate because we created that scaffold. We now need to migrate to the database. And then we can do a DB colon seed to seed our database. And this will then set us up. So now if we come into our Rails C, we can do a post.all. And we can see all of the different posts in here that have just some nonsense in the title and the body that we can then work with, right? The final thing we're going to want to do here, uh, as we go to create this, we're going to start creating posts. We're going to go to the post index page when we do. We're probably not going to want to do a post dot. Uh, all where we get them in like the order they were created in. We probably want to do this in like reverse. So we want to say order created at and then DESC so that we can get these in the right order. So now if we, and then we can do a post dot order by created at DESC. You'll see that the first thing at the bottom here is going to be our oldest post. And then our technically newest post, which is the 20th one, will be at the top here. And then this will be the first one that we get in this list when we go to display it. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the Rails API portion here. If you wanna set up like your tests, you're more than welcome to. You can run your Rails test command. Those should all pass out of the box with the uh, API flag. You can come into your tests and like your controllers and your post controller and you can come in here and you can make sure that whatever this is doing is what you would expect. So maybe you wanna say like test um, should uh, display posts in, uh, yeah, descending order, sure. And you want to get the post URL, and then you want to assert uh, that the uh, post.order is, is uh, the same as your assigns uh, posts, right? So if we do this, then we can run another Rails test. We can just check if this is working, and you'll see here that we have the uh, no method error assigns has been extracted to a gem. To continue using it, add the gem 
Rails uh, controller testing to your gem file. So we can do that real quick. We can just copy this right here and we can do a bundle add for this gem. Not the best practice to add it like this, but that's fine. It's just quick so that we can show you how to do this. We add it, then we can do a Rails test again to see if this test passes. And now this test is passing. So now we can check if we ever change this. Let's say we go back to post.all instead. For some reason, we have like a epiphany where we think that's the right way to do things. We do that, we run our tests, and we can see uh, that we are no longer displaying the posts in descending order, right? So that's just one of the ways you can do this. Now, the final thing I want to do here for this video is do a git add dot, git commit dash m, and we'll say this is our init commit. And I want to come over to github.new because I want to create a repository that we can commit to this so that we can do this properly. So we'll come in here and we'll just say this is our uh, Rails React app, right? So we'll probably have to put all of our code in here, but that's fine. We'll go ahead, we'll click create repository. And then we can come in here and we can copy the line at the bottom here, this section right here, this block, because we already have an existing repo. So we just copy this, we right click to paste, hit enter, and then we're good to go. If we now come up here and we refresh, we should have everything set up for our Rails React app. So that's gonna do it for part one of this mini series or whatever this turns into. Uh, hopefully you got something out of this. Hopefully this is you know interesting for you if you're Rails React dev. Uh, and hopefully this stops so many people from asking me to cover this because I've covered it like four times before, but this time we'll, we'll do it properly. We'll do the whole thing uh, until you know, you're know you ready and willing to do your, your intern interviews or whatever you guys have going on. But yeah, that's gonna do it for me. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will see you in the next one.